Hey you guys, what's up? My name's Jason and today I'm going to be taking you through a tutorial on how to create some amazing, fantastic 2D special effect animations for your games. Like this one right here. This is a little tutorial segment for my new course on how to animate 2D special effects for your games. So if you're interested, go ahead and click on the link in the description and that will allow you to enroll in the course. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And we want our document to be 400 pixels by 400 pixels. Hit OK. And then we're going to fill our background in with the color black. And then we can add in a new layer above that. This new layer is for our first frame. Now in our first frame, we want our explosion to begin. So what we'll do is we're going to come in and select the color white. And then we're going to come over to our lasso tool. Make sure you're on the lasso tool and not the polygonal lasso tool. And we're going to paint in our explosion. So let's zoom in there so we can see a little bit better. And sorry, we're not going to paint it in, we're going to draw it in. So we want it to kind of be like a messy star. So we're just gonna go something like this. Now don't worry about it being perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Great. Now let's go ahead and fill that in with the color white. And then we're going to fill in a tiny little star in the middle of it with the color orange. So using my lasso tool, I'm going to go ahead and draw in that star like so. And then we can fill that in with orange and we want it to be completely saturated orange. So all the way up to the top right corner of our color picker. And then let's fill that in. Great. Now let's go ahead and add in our second frame by adding a new layer. And on this layer, it's basically going to be a copy of this, just bigger. So using my lasso tool, I'm going to draw a bigger explosion, or it kind of looks like a flower if you want to think about it that way. Then I'm going to fill that in with white. And then I'm going to switch over to an orange. Now up here in my swatches, I can go ahead and select that same color of orange. If your swatches aren't turned on, you want to come up to window, then come down to swatches and make sure that's checked. So I'm going to select that orange. And then what I want to do is I want to lighten that. So I'm going to drag that to about there. I'll hit OK. Then using my lasso tool once again, I'm going to go ahead and draw on a smaller flower within there. And I'll fill that in with that light orange. Now I'm noticing that this one right here looks a little bit funny. So I'm going to go ahead and use my lasso tool and go like that and then delete that area. That just feels a little bit better to me. So now our explosion is going to go from that frame to this frame. Now let's go ahead and select the, both these layers and just make sure that they're in the center of our document. Great. Now let's go ahead and add in our third layer for our third frame. And what we want to do on this third frame is we want to switch over to our brush tool with a pretty large size circular hard edged brush. And using the same orange color that we already had selected, we're going to paint in random dots like so. And this is going to quickly create our sort of a cloud look, but with the fire colors. And you want to switch up your brush size a little bit, so you might have some small ones in there and some that are just barely touching the edges. And you might have larger ones in there. All right, next what we want to do is we want to switch our color over to a dark orangish reddish color. So we're going to come more towards the red side. And then we're going to come all the way over almost completely saturated and then come down in darkness. So somewhere in there, we'll hit OK. And then we're going to do the same thing again, but with this color. And we want to keep it within our lighter orange color. And we can bring our brush size down to get some other shapes in there. Perfect. Next, let's go ahead and grab a yellow color. So we're going to come up into our yellows. And we want this to be completely saturated. We might come down a little bit more towards the orange side. And then we're going to paint in some random big spots of yellow, like so. Some of them can be touching, some of them you don't want to be touching. Perfect. 
perfect. Now lastly, we wanna go ahead and paint in some white within our yellows. So we're gonna bring our color all the way over to white and we wanna paint in some white spots just like so. Keep them smaller than your yellow circles. Now we just finished our third frame. Let's go ahead and move on to our fourth frame. So we'll add a new layer. And on this frame, we want to select this dark orangish red color. And we're gonna make our whole base color for our explosion out of that. So go like so. Great. Next, what we want to do is we want to select this lighter orange color. So if I turn that off, this lighter color back here, we want to select that. And then we're going to turn this layer back on. And then we want to paint in our next layer of explosion. So we want to keep these pretty spread out. So we'll put one like there, 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 and play with the varying sizes of your brush. Great. Next, let's go ahead and select our yellow color. So if we come up to our swatches, we can reselect our yellow color. And then we're gonna go ahead and paint in within each one of these spots. Remember to keep them inside of these circles. Perfect. So now let's quickly go over the frames that we've created thus far. So let's turn them all off and start with frame one. So in frame one, we start off with the beginning of our explosion. It's pretty small, and then in the next one, it moves up bigger, and then in the next one, it blows up, and then in the next one, it sort of begins to dissipate. So it's still getting larger, but the heat intensity of it is dissipating, and you can tell because the colors are getting darker and more towards the orange side. Let's go ahead and finish up the last few frames of our animation. So in the next few frames, what's going to happen is our explosion is going to start turning into smoke, and then that smoke is going to completely fade away. So let's add a new layer, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off all of my layers except for this last layer that we just created. And then on this new layer, I'm going to select a gray color. So I'm gonna come down into my grays and I actually wanna add a little bit of some warmth to it. So I'm gonna come over into the more saturated side of my grays and I'm gonna come down into my oranges. The reason why I'm coming into my colors to give it some warmth is because if I keep it over here, it's going to appear blue next to my orange. And that's the reason for that. So we'll go ahead and hit okay and now we're gonna start painting in that smoke. So switching over to my brush tool and bringing the size up, we're going to start painting in some circles for smoke. Now what you need to understand about this frame is our explosion is beginning to dissipate and so our circles are going to start spreading out. They're not all gonna to be touching each other. So we might have some over here, we might have one here, two here. And so they're very spread out now. Let's bring our brush size down so we can get some other variation in there. Great, so something like that should work. Next, we wanna go ahead and add a new layer above this, and then we're gonna right click that new layer, and we're gonna come over to where it says create clipping mask. So now this layer is a clipping mask for this gray. So anything we paint on this layer won't go outside of this gray shape. So let's go ahead and select our dark orange color back here. And then using my brush tool, I'm gonna to go ahead and paint in the tops of these by creating circles like so. Whoops. Now at this point, you also don't just have to create dots. If you want, you can go ahead and make some swirling motions with your mouse or your drawing utensil. And That'll make the process just a little bit quicker. Next, we wanna select this light orange back here. And at this point, we can go ahead and turn off this background layer. We don't need it anymore. And what we're gonna do is we're going to paint on this layer 
but at 50% opacity. So the way you change the opacity of your brush is by hitting the numbers on your keyboard. So if we hit the number five, that's going to change our opacity to 50%, which means we're only going to be able to see through it 50% of the way. So if I paint that in, you'll see it's a lot lighter than usual. It's half as light actually. Now we're gonna go ahead and select that color. So we have our mid ground color. That's the color between our original color and this orange. Kind of like a mix between the two colors. Then I'm gonna switch back over to my brush tool and hit the number zero on my keyboard to bring my brush opacity back up to 100%. So now if I paint with this, you'll see it's the exact same color, but it's not see-through at all. So now we're gonna go ahead and paint in some spots like so. We want to keep these pretty spread out. And then we want to select our lighter orange color that we originally had. So over here in our color swatches, we can go ahead and select that color. And then we're going to go ahead and paint in some spots, oops, like so. You want to keep these pretty spread out and within the orange areas. Now I forgot to add some orange here, so I'm going to quickly go ahead and paint that in. Great, so now we have our fifth frame. Let's go ahead and merge these two layers together. So now those are one, and now we're going to add a new layer for our next frame, and we want to select our gray color. And then with this, it's going to be very similar to our last frame, but we're going to have less smoke and it's going to be spread out more. So we want to bring our brush size down so that these smoke areas are much smaller. And you want your smoke areas to be generally in the same spot. So as it dissipates, we want our smoke to be moving, which is why I've kind of moved around where my smoke is, but it's generally in the same spot as where the smoke was last. Now let's go ahead and add in our oranges. So I'm gonna select my dark orange color, and then I'm gonna only paint within my gray areas like so. Now lastly, what we want to do is we want to select this mid-tone color that's between our dark orange and our light orange. So we're going to select that. Then we can turn off this back layer so we can see what's going on. And we want to paint on top of this dark orange color, just like so. Remember to keep your orange within the dark orange. Great, so now we just finished our sixth frame. Let's go ahead and add in a new layer for our seventh frame. And we're gonna select our gray color. And then we wanna do the same thing again, but even smaller. So this stuff is really going to start dissipating. So we'll have one there, maybe one spread over here, another one about there, and another one over here, maybe a little tiny one next to it. Maybe this guy has turned into one small little smoke piece. This guy and that guy, add one there and maybe one there. Now let's go ahead and turn off our back layer to see how that looks. So as you can see, it's almost just a bunch of circles now. Let's add one more layer for our last animation frame. And on this one, it's going to be very similar to this one, just even less. So we might have one there. We might have a tiny little one there. This guy might turn into a tiny little guy there. Um, this guy might just be one, and this guy might sort of morph into two, and this guy might shrink down. So now let's go ahead and turn off our back layer to see how that looks. So it's hardly anything. Now I want to turn down the opacity on both these layers, so 
as they dissipate, they also become more transparent. So starting with this one right here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring down the opacity to about 50%. And then the next one, I'm gonna turn that on so I can see it. I'm gonna bring it down to 25%. Great. Now let's go ahead and run through these really quick to see how the animation plays out. So I'm gonna turn on my frame one. So first it starts out as a small explosion and then it gets bigger until it completely explodes into fire. And then in the next one, the heat starts to dissipate. The explosion is still getting bigger, but the colors are turning more towards the orange side because it's cooling off. Then in the next one, it starts to really dissipate and become smaller pieces of an explosion. And you also start to see some of that smoke in there. Then in the next one, it's mostly smoke with small pieces of heat and fire. And then in the next one, it's all smoke. And then in the next one, it's almost just tiny little dots of smoke in there. Now let's go ahead and set this up as an animation and see how it plays. So we're gonna come down here to our timeline and hit create frame animation. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames. And we wanna leave a blank one at the beginning and the end. So I'm gonna add in 10 frames and then we have one of our layers turned on. So I'm gonna select all those and turn our last frame off. And then starting on frame two, we can turn on our layer one or frame one. And then we can move on to frame three and move up to the next layer or the next frame. And then move on to the third one, the fourth one, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth. So now let's go ahead and run through those and see how those look. So we'll start on two, then it gets bigger, explodes, begins to cool off, begins to dissipate, starts turning into smoke, becomes complete smoke, and now you can almost, can't hardly see it at all. So let's go ahead and select all of these and we're gonna change their time play. So we're gonna come over to other and we're gonna type in 0 0.03 and the reason why I'm typing in 0 0.03 is because that's about 24 frames per second, which is how much most animations play by. Go ahead and hit OK. And now we can go ahead and play that. Great, I think that looks pretty good. Now, if you're following along or you're planning on creating this project, I think you'll be pretty impressed with yourself once you see your final product. This isn't a really hard animation to do and it looks amazing. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button to get many more videos like this one right here. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.